The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to all. I am Ridula on behalf of K-Ratings. Welcome you to our today's webinar on textiles, man-made fibers. I appreciate your time in joining us for this webinar. To take you further, our speakers for today is Mr. Milan Gadkari, Senior Director at K-Ratings. Along with Milan, uh, we have uh, 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 Polket Agarwal, uh, Associate Director, and Saurabh Valerao, uh, Associate Director at K-Ratings. Uh, as always, the, in, uh, the discussion is, is in form of a presentation, which is visible on your screen. Uh, in case of queries, we'll be having a Q&A session no sooner the presentation ends. I repeat, uh, we'll be having a Q&A session uh, no sooner the presentation ends. You are requested to start key in the questions in the slot provided for the Q&A session. I request Melinda to begin the uh, presentation. Thanks, Mudul. Good afternoon to all of you and welcome to KS webinar on man-made fiber industry. The textile industry is one of the largest and the most important sectors for the Indian economy in terms of output, foreign exchange earnings and is the second largest employment provider after agriculture. The textile industry being an industry with economic importance has always been able to attract the attention of the government. From time to time, the government has introduced policies like tufts and high import duty to discourage imports to promote the sector. Today, India is one of the largest leading manufacturers of man-made textiles, being the second largest producer of man-made fiber globally after China. Man-made fiber is dominated by polyester and viscose, which account for over 90% of demand in India. Globally, man-made fiber dominates fiber consumption, while domestically it plays second fiddle to cotton. Care ratings expects man-made fiber consumption to remain relatively stable. Going ahead, the demand for man-made fiber from the textile sector will largely be driven by the growing usage of blended fabrics to meet the augmented demand for the apparels, home textiles, and technical textiles. Care expects polyester consumption to register a steady pickup. In the webinar today, we would provide an overview of the industry along with the growth, trade movement, and characteristics such as segmentation, prices, and demand drivers. Lastly, we would also discuss the financial performance, rating dispersion, and share of share our outlook on the industry. My colleagues Pulkit and Saurabh would take you through this presentation. Now I will hand it over to Saurabh. Thank you Milind and Bradul. Saurabh here and welcome once more. The Indian textile and apparel industry contributes approximately 7% to the industrial output in value terms and approximately 4% to the country's GDP. The industry employs over 45 million people directly and 65 million people indirectly. Moving on to the man-made fibers, that is the MMF segment. India is the second largest producer of MMF after globally after China, but is ranked sixth in terms of the exports of man-made fiber textiles. In FI18, MMF production stood at around 2,500 million kilos and registered a marginal decline of about 0.7% year on year after registering a slight increase in the last year. On the other hand, domestic demand witnessed an uptick in FI18 consumption increasing vis-a-vis -vis a decline witnessed in the previous year. The domestic MMF industry mainly comprises of two components, polyester and viscose, which together accounts for over 94% of the demand in the industry. Moving on to the MMF value chain, MMF are fibers are synthetically produced using fiber forming chemical substances. It is a fiber in which the basic chemical units have been formed by chemical synthesis followed by fiber formation. Products that fall under the MMF category can broadly be classified into synthetic fiber or yarn and cellulosic fiber and yarn. Within the synthetic fiber yarn segment, Indian players manufacture poly products such as polyester stable fiber, that is PSF, polyester filament yarn, that is PFY, nylon filament yarn, and acrylic staple fiber. And in the cellulosic fiber and yarn segment, we manufacture predomin predominantly viscose stable fiber, viscose filament yarn. Po 
and polyester accounts for approximately 77.5%, while viscose accounts for the remaining share of the total demand. MMF is used, primarily used to produce 100% non-cotton fabrics and blended fabrics used to manufacture ready-made garments, textiles, and other industrial textiles. MMF dominates the world fiber consumption, accounting for more than 75% of the overall fiber consumption. The rise in share can be attributed to the growing consumption of MMF in the developing countries and continued consumption at elevated levels in the developed nations. Going forward, the share of MMF is expected to grow even further as the world cotton production is expected to reach its peak and MMF industry is expected to fulfill the incremental demand. Polyester has overtaken cotton as dominant fiber, but cost and availability still play a significant role in the interfiber substitution. Crude oil prices and cotton prices affect the domestic de demand for fiber, respective fiber in the world. Domestically, higher availability of cotton at a better rate dampens polyester and viscose consumption. MMF demand from technical textiles and home textile segments is expected to remain strong. MMF, therefore, is expected to continue playing second fiddle to cotton in India. The domestic MMF demand witnessed an in slight increase of approximately 3.6% in FI18 on account of release of pent-up demand post demonetization and GST implementation. However, increased availability of cotton, a large substitute at competitive prices, restricted the growth. Cotton prices remained largely stable in FI18 compared with an increase of over 11% and about 7% in PSF and PFY prices respectively in the domestic market. Also, exports of MMF declined by close to 8% in FI18 after increase, increasing by close to 15% YOY in FI17 on the back of rising polyester prices due to high input costs led by increasing crude oil prices. For the first half of FI19, exports of man-made staple fiber increased marginally and reached 555 million kilos from 547 million kilos in the same period last year. Under polyester, polyester staple fiber and polyester filament yarn account for 43.6% and 55.7% share respectively in FI18 while the balance small portion of was accounted by polypropylene triple fiber and polypropylene fiber yarn. In cotton season FI17, due to higher availability of cotton on the back of over 2.2% increase in cotton production post decline for two consecutive years, production of polyester registered only a marginal decline of about 3% on a YOI basis. Also on the back of liquidity crunch led by demonetization, textile industry witnessed muted demand. In FI18, demand was further impacted due to the implementation of goods and service tax. Polyester production further declined by about 1% in FI18 to reach close to 2,000 million kilos on the back of overall muted demand. However, post third quarter FI18, demand marginally started to pick up and registered YOY growth of about 1.5% in polyester consumption for FI18. For the first half of FI19, consumption registered a sharp decline of over 18% on the back of higher prices. Crude oil prices during the period witnessed a sharp increase of over 47%, thereby leading to a sharp increase in the input price of cotton, polyester. PTA and MG, M PTA and MEG by over 30% and over 20% YOY. Also, higher availability of substitute of cotton in the market at comparatively lower prices led to subdued demand for polyester. The top export destinations for Indian PSF are USA at 19%, Nepal, Bangladesh, Belgium, and Turkey. On the import front, Approximately 8 to 10 percent of import the policy demand in India is met through imports. The key countries from which India imports are China, 58 percent, South Korea, Indonesia, Thailand, and Taiwan. Moving on to PFI, PFI accounts a relatively smaller portion of domestic consumption, and major export destinations are USA, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Turkey. While major countries are China, from which import from China, South Korea, Indonesia, Thailand. Moving on to the price trends of polyester vis a vis cotton. PSF and PFI prices witnessed an increase of about 11.4% and 6.8% respectively on a YOY basis in FI18, while cotton prices remained largely stable. Prices further registered a growth of over 19% and 17% during April to November FI 2018 on the back of high input costs, while cotton prices witnessed only a marginal increase of about 11% during the same period. PSF and PFI prices averaged at around 
123.8 per kilo and 122 kilo rupees per kilo respectively for the april to november fi uh, 2018 period moving on to the feedstock for polyester pta is the key raw material component in the polyester value chain and interacts with monoethylene glycol that is meg in the process of polymerization for producing polyester for production of every 1 million tons of polyester melt produced by the process of continued polymerization 0.86 metric ton of PTA is required. Largest application for PTA is polyethylene tetraphylate for the polyester industry to produce industrial and textile fibers. The PTA industry is a highly organized industry with the Lance Industries, Mitsubishi and IOCL being the primary PTA manufacturers in India. PTA production has remained largely stable, averaging around 3,500 tons over the last five years. Demand for PTA is driven by textile and beverages sectors. Earlier during the FY14 to FY15 period, with increasing consumption of PTA, the demand was met by imports. But the expansion of capacities by the manufacturers in India, the share of imports in the PTA industry declined over the years. The MEG industry is also highly organized, with the Reliance Industries, Indian Glycols, and IOCL being the primary manufacturers in India. The MEG production in India has also remained largely stable at around 1,000 to 1,100 tons during FY14 to FY18. It registered only a marginal growth of around 1.4% CAGR from 1,069,000 tons to double one double three thousand tons in FI18. Imports have been increasing consist consistently since FI14. However, in FI18, imports declined by around 13.7% year on year on the back of higher domestic production as well as subdue demand. A growth of 7% in imports was registered between 14 and 18, while consumption reported a slower growth of about 3.4% during the period. Moving on to the price trends, costs of these petrochemical derivatives are subject to volatility in crude oil prices. The prices remained largely stable in FY17 and declined marginally by about 1% on a YOY basis. However, in FY18, with rising crude oil prices, PT and MEG prices registered an increase of over 9% and 22% year on year, respectively. Prices further picked up in FI18, FI19 in the April to November period by over 30% for PTA and over 15% for MEG on the back of a sharp increase of 45, over 40% in crude oil prices during the same period. In the MEG market is expected to be weak amidst anticipation for further capacity additions. Moving on to the cellulosic fibers, that is viscose. Under viscose, Approximately 88% share is held by viscose staple fiber, while viscose filament yarn accounts the balance percent. Viscose production in India continues to be largely stable at around 400 million kilos and registered a marginal C compounded annual average growth rate of about 0.7% during the period. The production can be attributed to increased usage of VSF in the growing blended yarn market. After increasing by about 6% in FY17, Viscose production increased only marginally by about 1.4% on the back of muted demand in the country. In FI19, first half of FI19, VSF production has managed a sharp growth of over 40% to 271 million kilos as compared to 190 million kilos in FI18, similar period in FI18. Going forward, the VSF demand will be driven by both the textiles and the non-woven segments over the long term. Increasing consumer awareness about the benefits of cellulose fibers has attracted greater focus on offering innovative VSF variants in terms of color, texture, and other value-added properties. VSF consumption remains largely stable. Grasim has been the largest manufacturer of VSF across the globe. Huge amount of VSF produced domestically is export. The share of exports in the overall production has increased from approximately 28% in FI14 to over 30, 31% in FI18. As of FI18, the top export, export destinations for Indian VSF are Turkey, China, USA, Bangladesh, and Israel. Together, these destinations account for over 50% market share for the, in the export segment. In the case of VFI, which is a comparatively smaller segment, the top export destinations accounting for over 50% are Morocco, Turkey, USA, and Brazil, while the key countries exporting VSF to India are Indonesia and Australia. China is the single largest major country exporting VFY to India with a share of over 97% of in FI18. Moving on to the price trends, the VSF prices are de dependent on the price of wood pulp. 
the VSF prices have largely remained stable, while the prices of VSF are driven by the availability and prices of other fibers and energy cost. Currently, VSF prices are around 196 rupees per kilo, and the price of VFI is around 341 per kilo in the domestic market. The industri industry is primarily driven. The demand drivers include demographic, as can be mentioned on the screen, the demographic advantage and urbanization, rising income levels and growing cap per capita expenditure, growing spread of plastic money, and the growing female working population, and increasing demand for technical textiles and home textiles. If you look at the demographic advantage and urbanization, the proportion of Indian populace in the age group of 15 to 64 years increased from 55.4% in 1991 to over 66% in 2017. The population of 25 to 54 years age group is one of the highest spending age group. The current dynamics are expected to boost the retail sales of textiles in India. Further, the median age of India is around 26.7 years, one of the lowest globally compared to 37.2 in US, 45.8 in Japan, and 36 in China. Considering the size of the Indian population, the lower median age also implies a higher number of working population, thereby clearly outlining the earning potential as well as the spending potential of the population. If you look at the rising income levels, between FI13 and FI18, India's per capita GDP grew at around 11% CAGR. Per capita personal disposable income CAGR increased with a growth of 9.5%. Final consumption expenditure grew at around 12%. And private final consumption clothing, only clothing, increased with CAGR for around 15.8% between FI12 and FI16. Plastic money has also resulted in increased spending among the consumers, thereby fueling demand. The incentives offered on discounts and selected sales linked to plastic money have also lured the Indian consumer to experience consumers of cashless shopping. On the Further, on the backdrop of growing Indian economy, the participation of female workforce in the country's economic activities has increased considerably. The proportion of the female workforce, which accounts for 26% of the country has in 71, has in scaled to 31% in FI11. Notably, the percentage of women involved, working women involved in the organized industrial activities too has increased from 27% to 47%. The higher purchasing power has also of working women has also in, enhanced the ability for the former to spend much more than comparatively. Along with the drivers, the challenges faced by the industry include volatile currency and crude oil prices, cheaper import from countries such as Bangladesh, higher environmental consum consumptions, concerns, locational disadvantages and poor infrastructure, comparatively poor infrastructure, infrastructure facilities. Higher man-made fiber, especially the synthetic fiber, carry higher environmental risk as compared to other fibers. The high risk can be attributed to the consumption of non-renewable resources in, involved in the production of synthetic fibers. Also, non-degradable materials are used in the production of synthetic fibers. The manufacture of nylon creates nitrous oxide, and cellulosic fibers such as rayon, viscose, and acetate are produced from renewable sources, but they generate higher levels of air pollutants and comparatively and water emissions. Look, India suffers from a geographical disadvantage as it is located far away from major global fiber consuming markets like America and Europe compared to its global counterparts. Consequently, India has also has to bear a higher shipment cost with longer lead times, thereby impacting exports. The sector is continuously supported by the government of India. The government has undertaken several policy initiatives to promote the textile sector, during the man including the man-made fibers sector. Some of these in initiatives include the DGFT has revised rates for incentives under the Merchandise Export Scheme for two subsectors of the industry, ready-made garment and made-ups, which, which could affect the demand for MMF fiber. The government has also announced a special package to boost exports and create job opportunities and attract investments. The government of India has also undertaken several measures, including ATUFs, that is the Amended Technology Upgradation Fund Scheme, to increase employment opportunities and available investments. Further, in August 18, as of August 2018, the government increased the basic customs duty to 20% from 10% on over 500 textile products to boost domestic manufacture. The government has also recently imposed 
anti-dumping duty on imports of Chinese PFI. The anti-dumping duty on Chinese polyester yarn is up to $520 per ton. Further, recently, anti-dumping duty of up to $719 per ton has been imposed on nylon filament yarn from Vietnam and e European Union for five years. Further, the government has doubled the duty on import of synthetic fibers to boost domestic synthetic fiber yarn consumption. However, this is not expected to help further because fabric imports from Bangladesh continue to be duty free. Additionally, the Ministry of Textiles and the Textile Commissioner's Office have launched a study to promote growth of man-made fire textiles in India and to identify the gaps and suggest measures. The study is aimed at finding out the factors responsible for the stagnation of the sector. The study will be to understand the successful strategies of countries such as China, Indonesia, Vietnam, Bangladesh to enhance the production of con and consumption of MMF textiles in India. Moving on to the financial performance of the industry, KR ratings has analyzed the revenue and the profit structure of the organized MMF industry in India. Net sales in FI18 declined by about 3.2% after registering an increase of 1% in FI18, dragged down by subdued demand for the segment. The operating margins, as it can be seen in the chart, trended in the 8% range. In line with the operating margin, net margin also increasing hovered at around 1%. Further, FI17 margins have been affected by losses incurred by companies such as Indorama Synthetics, an FI17 loss of around 80, 80 crores, Nakoda, a loss of around 78 crores, for a while FI18 margins were affected by lo losses by such players as JBF, FI18 loss of around 120 crores, Nakoda, FI18 loss of around 470 crores, FI18 operating margin and net margin would have been 8% and 1% respectively if these two companies had been excluded from the sample. Further, the debt to equity ratio increased in FI18 to reach 2.9% times. Net debt by EBITDA also increased substantially in FI18. I now pass on to Pulkit who would continue with the webinar. Thank you, Saurabh, and a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we will discuss uh, about uh, key parameters which apart from the normal financial parameters have a bearing on the credit profile of mmf players product profile uh, polyester industry is a highly fragmented industry marked by presence of various organized and unorganized players intense competition in the industry limits the pricing ability of the players operating in the industry hence in order to remain competitive uh, scale, level of integration and uh, product offerings become highly significant. Companies in the industry which are vertically integrated are in a better position to sustain and grow and also compete in global and domestic markets. Further, companies which have diverse product offerings like POY, PTY, FDY and PSF are in a better position to sustain competition and uh, protect margins. Uh, Crude price movement. Uh, uh, feed stock uh, of polyester is PTA and MEG, which are derivative of crude oil, and uh, they are obtained from perxylene and ethylene, respectively. Hence, crude oil price trend plays an important role in determining margins of polyester players. Uh, this further gains significance on account of the fact that raw material accounts for around 65 to 70 percent uh, of the total income of polyester players. The ability of polyester players to pass on the crude oil price in final product is affected not only from the demand and supply scenario, but also by price trend of competing fibers. Uh, price movement of cotton. As discussed earlier also in the presentation, uh, PSF is a close substitute for a cotton and a preferred fiber for, bl for blending with viscous and cotton. Comparative prices of PSM and cotton mainly affect the demand uh, for PSF. Uh, spinning mills can also alter their blending ratios in response to changes in prices and availability of different fibers. Uh, as discussed in the earlier slide, uh, during 10 month uh, FY19, uh, the spread between uh, PSF and cotton fiber has reduced on account of higher feed stock prices and relatively stable cotton prices. In cotton season 2018-19, CARE expects cotton prices to marginally pick up from the current levels uh, 
and remain firm with the new cotton arrivals in the market on back of strong export demand and increased MSP by the government. Higher cotton prices and declining crude oil prices uh, augurs well for MMF players. Uh, CAPEX cycle uh, uh, during FY11 and FY14, roughly around 2000 million kgs of capacities was added in the MMF industry. Uh, due to significant capacity addition in a short period of time, operating rates declined from around 90% in FY11 to around 70% in FY16, affecting the margins of the players in the industry. However, in the last couple of years, we have not seen significant capacity additions in the industry and with the gradual improvement in demand, operating rates are also expected to improve. With the improvement in operating rates, CARE expects further capacities to be added, uh, to be added in the sector, which would uh, remain a key monitorable. Coming to the MCR of the textile sector, uh, uh, CARE ratings uh, MC, uh, modified credit ratio is, uh, is basically a ratio of upgrades and reaffirmations to downgrade uh, and reaffirmations. Uh, basically, an increase in MCR denotes an increase in upgrades vis a vis downgrades, whereas a decrease in MCR shows the reverse trend. In other words, an increase in the MCR implies an improving credit quality of the rated entities, while a decline in the same signals deterioration in credit quality of the rated entities. An MCR close to 1 indicates higher stability in the ratings with a larger proportion of reaffirmations. Uh, if we look at the slide over the period MCR of the textile sector has shown a declining trend which implies moderation in credit quality of the sector. Uh, certain reasons due to which MCR of the textile sector has declined is basically on account of declining profitability, uh, deterioration in capital structure, uh, there were issues with regard to debt servicing and uh, worsening liquidity positions uh, which were the primary factors that led to ratings downgrade in the sector. Uh, coming to the rating dispersion, uh, KR has a portfolio of around 90 companies and a major part of the portfolio is uh, sub-investment grade which is below, uh, which is at double B plus and below and uh, that is mainly on account of commoditized nature of the product which results in low margins, lack of, uh, lack of integrations and a high working capital intensity of the industry. Uh, look, coming to the credit outlook uh, and what is the way forward for the industry. Uh, with the industry now stabilizing, stabilizing post the demonetization and implementation of goods and service tax, the demand from downstream industry apparels and made ups from both domestic and international markets has only marginally picked up in the last few months. Uh, polyester has overtaken cotton as a dominant fiber in the developing countries. However, cost and availability continues to play a significant role uh, in the interfiber substitution. Crude oil prices and uh, cotton prices will also continue to affect the demand for respective fibers. On the other hand, if we look at the Indian textile, is in, in Indian textile industry is predominantly a cotton-based industry. However, limited area under cultivation and erratic rain impacts cotton availability in the country. Cotton crop also faces stiff competition from other higher MSP crops. Uh, in cotton season 2018-19, KIA rating expects cotton prices to marginally pick up from the current levels and remain firm with the new cotton arrivals in the market on back of improved global demand, exports and increased MSP by the government. With limited supply in the market during uh, first half of the cotton season on account of increased orders from China, prices are expected to register growth of about 5 to 7 percent and reach around 120 to 125 per kg level during this period and average at about 127 to 130 per kg, registering a YOY growth of about 9 to 12 percent. In uh, FY17 and 18, factors such as sluggish demand, sharp rise in imports, rigid competition from cotton yarn, fall in realizations, and temporary loss of production on account of demonetization weighed down on the MMF industry. 
However, the domestic industry is on a revival, revival path and is expected to improve going forward. Therefore, in the short to medium term, care rating expects MMF consumption to remain relatively stable. While with an improved global landscape, increased demand for technical textiles and constrained cotton availability in the long term, care expects polyester consumption to register a steady pickup. However, with cheaper Bangladeshi apparels flowing into the Indian markets, demand for fabric from domestic apparel manufacturers will be affected. Lower demand from fabric manufacturers uh, will adversely impact demand for PSF and PFY. We therefore expect domestic PSF and PFY consumption to continue to face headwinds uh, due to uh, intense competition from uh, other markets. Also, with GST rates coming down from 18 to 12 percent, an increase in custom duties on various synthetic yarns and fibers, the industry is expected to remain competitive in the domestic as well as the international markets we service other countries. So, if uh, we summarize the challenges that the Indian MMF industry faces, mainly emanates from the commoditized nature of business and lack of integration. So, the way forward uh, to address these challenges is. Um, industry should look forward at uh, look forward for to integration integrate in order to stay competitive and also uh, diversify the offerings ranging from POY to FDY. Uh, the industry should also start uh, investing significantly in R&D in order to develop new products. There is an increased demand for specialty yarns like spandex, microfilament yarn, which have higher margins but are mostly imported. Uh, with this, we now come to end of the presentation, and uh, I'll hand over the mic to Mridul. Thank you, Pulkut, Saurabh, and Milan. Uh, participant will be taking a break of two minutes before we begin our Q&A session. Uh, if any queries, you can please start keying in the questions in the slot provided. I repeat, we'll be having a break of two minutes before we come back to take your queries. Thank you.
welcome back uh, we'll now uh, take the questions uh, first question is uh, uh, how going forward how how does care rating see the prices of fuel stock moving the prices uh, remain largely stable in fy17 and declined marginally by about 1% on yoy basis in fy18 uh, with rising crude oil prices pt and mg prices registered an increase of over 9% and 22% uh, year on year respectively uh, prices further increased in fy19 during period april to november by over 30% in case of pta and over 15% in case of mg on the back of uh, sharp 45% increase in crude oil prices during the same period however going forward with crude prices expected to be range bound we expect the feedstock stock prices to hover around uh, existing range for pt about 665 to 670 per ton dollar per ton however mg market is expected to remain weak amid anticipation of uh, capacity additions in this sector next question is uh, with higher cotton production in uh, cotton season 2018 how does uh, care ratings see the polyester prices uh, moving uh, with government announcing higher msp for cotton this year the acreage under cotton in the country increased uh, leading to higher production in cotton season 2018 19 care rating expects cotton prices to marginally pick up from the current levels and remain firm with the new cotton arrivals in the market on the back of improved global demand uh, exports and increased msp by the government with limited supply in the market during uh, half yearly half year cotton season 2018-19 on account of increased orders from china prices are expected to register a growth of about 5 to 7% and reach around reach to around 120 to 125 per kg Uh, uh, during this period with average of about 1 to 127 to around 130 per kg for cotton season 2018 and 19 registering a yoy growth of about 9 to 11% global volatility uh, cautious downstream operations and liquidity factors impacted polyester demand virgin psf demand slows down slowed down due to replacement by recycled psf polyester market would continue to be guided by the revival of chinese demand the polyester players would have to take a hit as there would be limited scope to pass on the increase in prices in case crude oil prices fluctuates and increase from the current levels what where are the global capacities being added for viscos and when are these capacities expected to commence operations uh, viscos capacities are actually grasim is putting up a significantly large plant in india in gujarat and the signif order uh, ordering has completed and in next 2 to 3 years it is expected to commence operations
what are the factors considered for considered for rating of MMF companies? So any rating broadly encompasses evaluation of uh, uh, following risk, management risk, business risk, industry risk, financial risk, and project evaluation. For MMF industry, apart from the above parameters, the level of integration, diversify, diversity in product profile, and inventory policy also plays an important role. MMF is a commodity product and hence level of integration and product profile helps the entity to withstand competition and maintain margins. Further, raw material of MMF, that is PT and MEG, being a derivative of crude, is susceptible to price fluctuations and hence the level of inventory carried by the company uh, plays an important role. Hello, uh, we have another question. What will be the impact of increasing customs due to an MMF fabric? The increase in import duty is definitely beneficial to domestic industry. The government double duty on import of synthetic fibers 20% to boost domestic synthetic yarn consumption. However, this is not expected to benefit in large sense because fabric imports from Bangladesh continue to be duty free. India imports mainly apples from Bangladesh. April imports from Bangladesh topped $140 million in FI18, an over 40% increase over the preceding year. Synthetic fiber apparel from Bangladesh is entering the Indian market because it's cheaper than apparel produced domestically. Bangladesh imports cheap fabrics from China to make garments and imports duty free as these fabrics are converted to apparel for export. With cheaper apparels flowing in, demand from fabric is expected to be affected. Lower demand is could adversely affect the demand for PSF and PFI. We therefore expect domestic PSF and PFI consumption to increase, but to continue to face headwinds due to the Bangladeshi apparels and other countries. Okay, we also feel that the government needs to apply safeguard guidelines, such as rules of origin, yarn forward rule and fabric forward rule on countries that have FTAs with India to stop routing of cheaper fabrics made in other countries through these nations. I think that was the last question taken up for the day. And there, there's one more pending query, which is from Mr. Gopal Agarwal. Uh, we'd like to say that uh, we'll be replying to your query by email. And uh, so by this, we'll be ending our webinar. Thank you again for to all the participants for taking your time out and being a part of this Caritics webinar. We sincerely hope the discussion was insightful and we really look forward to your uh, participation in future also in case of queries suggestions comments you can please write to us at cop.com uh, at uh, which will be coming in the suggestion box no sooner the webinar ends goodbye for now thank you